Hey YouTube, Untamed here. So today I'm gonna to give you my four month ownership update video on my 2019 Toyota Tundra Tier D Pro. So if you follow the channel for a while, you know for a fact that I have a bias. I have a bias for this truck. I've owned a few of them at this point. I had a 2020 Army Green one and a couple 2021 Lunar Rock uh, Tundra Tier D Pros. So as ugly as that is to say, I, I am a bit obsessed with this particular platform, right? So now the, the previous generation, Tundra, is what it is. Uh, and I like it so much more than the new one. You guys know that. Uh, but it is important for me to get my bias out of the way right from the beginning. Uh, I think there's a whole lot to love about this truck. A lot more to love about this compared to the 2022. And, and to be fair, I think I can be a little critical of the 22 because you guys know I'm going to be buying a 2023 Sequoia 2D Pro, which has the same exact, I mean, it's essentially the same thing as the 22 Tundra, right? Has the same iForce Max, twin turbo V6, hybrid power plant. Uh, there's a ton of similarities between the Sequoia and the Tundra. So I want to get that out of the way too, right? So, I mean, I'm about ready to buy that vehicle that I that I don't necessarily love, but I think it is the best bet when it comes to our growing family and being the, the best fit for us moving forward. So I'm excited to get that because I could do, no kidding, side-by-side -side comparisons and offered at that point less of a biased opinion because I own both of them at that point. So happy to share that come time. I hope to actually pick it up here next month. Uh, not even next month, maybe at the end of December here, we'll see. So excited to get that. It's gonna be an ice cap white, 2023 Sequoia 2D Pro with red interior. Uh, so I'm excited to get that and share more with you. But in this video, I'm gonna talk through the pros and cons of my ownership experience of this Tundra uh, and really answer that, the forbidden question, do I regret buying it? Okay, so I'll answer that here at the end. So the pros are, are the most obvious things. I won't geek out too much about it because you guys have heard me talk about it plenty, but the biggest pro up front, of course, is the power plant. Right, so we have that glorious and a half 5.7 liter V8 tied to that six speed buttery smooth six speed automatic transmission. So I love, love, love this power plant. And having driven the new 22 plenty and to include off road quite a bit, this is better. This is for sure better. I mean, you, you can geek out about all the numbers all you want, but when it comes to actually feeling like a real truck, this is better. I'm, I'm sorry to tell you guys that for those of you who bought a 22. So hopefully you don't beat me up too much. But of, of course, the 22 has phenomenal numbers, phenomenal towing, phenomenal horsepower and torque. The torque is insane. What is it? 500? 583? I forget what it is. It's super high, uh, especially compared to this. You got 381 horsepower and 401 foot-pounds of torque. So when it comes to capability, there's no denying that the 22 is better. So uh, I'll try to, try to, I'll try not to beat up on it too much. But when it comes to the actual appearance, this is of course a matter of preference. But I love the body lines of this Tundra. Um, you know, they're, they're subtle but sleek. Although it is very dirty right now, probably not the best day to do this video. But I love the subtle body lines back here. It's sharp. And, it, and it's fitting and it matches all throughout the truck. Especially when it comes to the front of the truck, I think it almost looks like a bulldog. You tell me if you agree. Cause you got the kind of the, the wide, the wide eyed um, headlights up front. And of course the giant heritage grill up front with the heritage font for Toyota. So I love this and I think it's gonna continue to age extremely well. And you can't say the same for the new 2200. And you can't say the same for the, for the new 23 Sequoia. I think, I don't know, I just, this is classic and subtle enough to where it's gonna to continue to age well. Uh, the color on the other hand, that's a matter of preference. <laughs> Voodoo Blue may not age well, uh, but for me, it's always been my favorite, so I love it. Um, so the V8, of course, you guys know I did a few additions to make this quote unquote my own, uh, to include the 295, uh, 70, 18 Nitto Ridge Grapplers, which these are, they, they've become my favorite tire for the Tundra in particular. Uh, it really is neck and neck between these and uh, BF Goodrich KO2s. For me, those are my favorites, especially with uh, the KO2s. You get the white lettering out that become, you know, I, I love that look. But I love the aggressive sidewall on these Nitto Ridge Grapplers. I think that looks the best when it comes to sidewall. But it's a hybrid tire too, so it's not overkill. I think, and, and you know, I think they're rated for 50,000 miles, so I think they do a great job. Uh, not to mention they have a great reputation overall. This Tundra here happens to have these, these very strange devices right here. Not sure what the, 
Not sure what those are. I think they're tow hooks. I'm not sure. I don't think any of our friends with 22s would know. <laughs> would know. I'm sorry, that was a low, low blow. But we get tow hooks on the, the Tundra here. How about that? So that's great. But the TRD catback exhaust tied to that 5.7 liter V8 is perhaps the most glorious component of it. So you get dual TRD catback exhaust, which sounds phenomenal. Again, forgive me, it's super dirty. We get, of course, both sides here. Um, I remember not liking the taillights when I first got this, my very first one, 2020. Uh, my Army Green, I thought these taillights just screamed 2008. Uh, just these giant red blocks, but it's strange. You know, our opinions change over time and I've really grown to appreciate this. It's almost nostalgic <laughs> at this point. So I like it and strangely enough, it's kind of reminiscent for me anyway, personally, for like my back to my 2005, 2006 Subaru WRX STI. These giant red tail lights out back uh, that just, they're functional, right? They're not supposed to look funky fresh or anything. They're just super functional and they, I don't know, it's nostalgic at this point. You guys know I put on this diamond back uh, bed cover with the, with the tie down cleats all throughout. I love the look of it. Not sure if I have justified buying it just yet because you know, a lot of people will get them and they're super durable. You can put stuff on top of it, but I don't know, like, why put it on top of it when you can just put it in the back of your bed, right? Uh, the only goodness of it, of course, is the obvious one. It keeps your things dry uh, on the inside there. So if you put groceries or whatever you put back there, um, it'll keep it dry. So, but I do love the look of it anyway. And Diamondback is a great company. Being about that dad life, the most important thing, even compared to the 22, is that. Right here, this back, the back seat space on this Tundra is unreal. Uh, I absolutely love it. There's like about a quarter acre back there for the kiddos to, to, to scream, fight, and throw stuff and all that. You know, it, it is even bigger than the 22, and by a notice, noticeable amount, I think. So I love, I'm not going to show you back. Hey, why not? It is filled right now so forgive me guys but this is the dad life right there oh my gosh so there you have it <laughs> so plenty of space back here I do love that this is perhaps one of my favorite aspects of the truck um, this being a let me give you more room here this being a 2019 it is extra retro because it comes with this old guy right here remember, remember these things so you got a you got an actual turnkey for the Tundra here, which I don't know. I I told myself I'd like that, but at the end of the day, I think I, I do appreciate the push to start that my 2020 had, and of course my 2021 Tundra has had. So I think that that is a pitfall of this particular one. Uh, just depending on who you talk to, it's you know a little bit less of a less nannies, less tech to potentially fail. Uh, so some people may actually prefer this, and, and I thought I would, but I do think the push to start was a little bit better um, overall. Not to mention, so you do get Toyota Safety Sense, you get the adaptive cruise control low radar up there, but <laughs> adding on to the extra retro-ness, you get this. Remember these things too? This <laughs> So this giant antenna, uh, and I thought about putting on one of those stubby ones, like not 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 the bullet one, uh, but like getting a little stubby one on here, um, just to make it a little less in your face. But at the end of the day, I'm trying to embrace the fact that it is retro, so I'm keeping it on there. Um, but yeah, you get the giant antenna on the 2019, and you do not get that on the 2020 and 2021. Uh, same iteration of this Tundra, though, too, right? Same generation. Um, so. Over the last four month, four months, excuse me, uh, I ended up putting on just, I think just under 8,000 miles total. So I bought it with just over 8,000 miles on it and I, I totally overpaid. And that's one thing I kinda, I kinda kicked myself for, but at the end of the day, none of us have a, have a crystal ball per se. We can't really see what the market is gonna do. And even then I knew I, I overpaid. I went into it, you guys watch my original video that I tell you I overpaid. Um, and, and I'm happy, I'm happy with the truck but I do regret buying it when I bought it. But again, I would have never really have known because uh, you don't have that crystal ball. So I regret paying $65,000 for a used 
the used 2019 Tundra Tutor Pro. So you can take to the comments, call me a dippy, because it is it is absurd. It, it was a bit much, um, but at the time it truly was the lowest mileage one with the best in the best condition. In out underneath, everything was perfect, no accidents. Of course, 8,000 miles. Uh, that was semi close to me out there in Maryland. So that's kind of why I pulled the trigger on it. Um, you know, had I traveled across the nation, I probably found I probably could have found uh, a couple that were similar-ish miles for a little bit less money. But by the time you travel and make the transportation costs come to life and hotel stays, if you travel, blah blah blah, it was going to turn into a little bit of a headache. And, and for what, saving a couple thousand dollars? So the silver lining of it all was me trading in my Land Cruiser. So Land Cruiser prices have come down. Um, I'd say these come down. These have come down a little bit more compared to the Land Cruiser, but at the time, yeah, I was able to get an exceptional trade value for the Land Cruiser. Um, so that's kind of the silver lining. You know, although I paid more for this, I got more for my trade back then, more than what I would have gotten if I would have gone and done it today, if that makes sense. So maybe today I would have spent, you know, 58000 for an 8,000 mile Tundra Tier Pro around there, give or take a couple few thousand, right? Uh, but I would have gotten less, probably eight, seven thousand dollars less for my trade-in because you know Land Cruisers they've come down about eight to ten thousand dollars just within the last few months so it's on par it's, it's all a wash at the end of the day um, but I also think it's important for me to share with you how much I paid for my vehicles because a lot of you guys will often meow if uh, you know because I complain about dealer markups but I complain about dealer markups when they're brand new on the lot and they get it from Toyota brand new vehicle and they slap a 10 grand mark upon I think that is silly and I think that's greedy but when it enters the market and it actually becomes a used vehicle then it becomes market value and that's where I think you know that's whatever the market is demanding for price tags that's when it becomes fair but I do think markups originating with the dealerships brand new is what propels the issue and creates the second and third order effects of it of inflated used market so I won't geek out too much more about that but all in all, do I regret it? Yes and no. I'll lean more toward yes, just because, you know, the price tag of how much I pay. Do I regret buying the actual truck? No, absolutely not. Uh, I do think that this is truly the last Tundra, the last real Tundra, because uh, once you start slapping a battery onto it, no matter what, it's gonna it's gonna be detrimental to the longevity of the vehicle, no matter what, uh, especially when you add on turbos too, because now you're making a smaller displacement motor work harder uh, to, to perform, get higher performance numbers. So you're just making a smaller displacement motor work harder with those turbos and then you put a battery on it. It's not a recipe for long-term success. So there's my video guys, 8,000 miles on it at this point. Still enjoy it, still love it. You guys know I put the rock sliders on it too, but I think I'm done with updates and modifications to it. So let me know what your thoughts are. Appreciate you watching as always. Till next time.